Well, good morning. We'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Help us now to look into your word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. We left off here last week. Uh, Matthew 19, uh, verse 1, we just started the chapter, and um, we, he just left Galilee area, and we're keeping the same thesis, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee, and he came into the coast of Judea beyond the Jordan, and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. So we know that he's left, that black line is, that indicates, and we saw how he left, he's gone on the other side of the Jordan, on the eastern side, and that's kind of strange. And this only happens if you're seeing a map. That's the only way you're gonna catch these things. Um, and and, you, and I, I tell you, I'm big on maps, because I've found so many things this way. And so, now, it could have happened like this, it could have crossed anywhere around there because that area is Galilee. So he could have gone as far as the Jezreel Valley and then crossed over because Perea is on the other side, right at that point. So anywhere around, especially when you get into the book of Luke, it says that um, the disciples, John and James, they went to the Samaritan village and they, they wouldn't let the Lord in. So they said, Lord, you want us to call fire down and burn this village up? And the Lord says, no, I didn't come to destroy. Amen. So it could have been, you know, that's what I'm saying. When you, now, if you ever try to harmonize the four Gospels, it ain't going to happen. Don't do it, because I already tried it. Because they don't, and some people say that's a, um, that's a contradiction. No, it's not. That's just that every Gospel is written for a specific reason. So there's no contradiction in the Word of God. None whatsoever. So we saw this. Great multitudes followed him to be in the same way over on the other side. And so, and he healed them there on the other side. And that can, you can take that both ways because there's people that never cross over into the, into the Christian uh, service life. They want the benefits. They'll only think of God. And they're Christians, but they only want God when they're sick or when some catastrophe happens in the family. That's the only time they want God. And so they always, they stay on the other side. And they're going to heaven. It hasn't but changed, brother. Still hasn't it changed. still hasn't, yeah, exactly. And, and, and I can do that. I, I can so easily fall into a rut. You know, I just go through, going through the motions, going through the motions. But then when something happens, then, oh Lord, you know. Um, but it hasn't changed, like you said, it's still there. So it, you can take it that way, or you can take it the fact that they were following him and they're gonna follow him in, into the land. Because God, see, he's taken us all the way down there. Now look at this, folks. Um, they, did they just want healing beyond the Jordan? So we dealt with that. Okay, uh, the country is divided at that point. It's always been divided. In fact, it was divided way back then when Abraham walked into the land. I mean, because something happens. If you pay attention, at, at this point here, there's two little towns called Bethel and Ai. Abraham, he was going to Egypt, and right there at Bethel, he, he built an altar and called upon the Lord. Right there at Bethel and Ai, Jacob is going north. Remember when he was leaving and he's going to go up to stay with his uncle and the uncle's going to trick him? Well, he, he slept there and he, he, he put up stone for his bed and then he poured oil on that stone and then he saw the ladder into heaven. It happened right there. There's something about that division. There's, I tell you, there's something. The more you dig into the Bible, the more you're going to find out. He's, he's giving you things. It's just that we don't go and, and, and look at for the reason why these things are so. But at that point, that's a division. That's always going to be a division. 
And I'm, tell, I'm making a big deal off of it because of the question they're going to ask him. They're about to ask him something here. The Pharisees. Now, so that's Israel on the north, and that's Judah on the south. That's the division. And then Judah has another division within it. And that division is between, because the two tribes of the south are Benjamin and Judah. They're always going to be looked at that way. Benjamin is very special, a very special tribe. A little tribe, it's the littlest one. And yet, they're the warrior tribe. And so Judah hangs with Judah. I mean, Benjamin hangs with Judah, uh, even though instead of going north with the other 10 tribes. So I make a deal of that because of what the teaching we're going to get into here. <clears throat> so he departed because he's been rejected. I mean, uh, and, and remember what we talked about last week? The, the parable of the treasure in the, in the field. He want, finds a treasure, he sells everything, and then he buys the field. So he's, I put there, he's gone to buy the field. He's gone to Jerusalem to die. This is the last, this is his going to Jerusalem. He's never gonna return again um, because he's going to die. Now the Pharisees, so here's what, here he comes. The Pharisees also came unto him <coughs> tempting him and saying unto him is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause and he answered and said unto them have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made a male and female so here's along with this multitude that are following him on the eastern side of the bank of the Jordan along comes these people these are the lawyers these are the uh, the people, these are the doctors of the law. These are the people that know, know the word of God. If you're going to want to know what the Bible says, these are the people you go to because they study it. So they come, they're coming and they're tempting him. They're, they're trying to find fault with him. It says they're tempting, they're testing him. And th this is the thing they ask him. Is it lawful for a man to put his wife uh, away for every cost, for any cost, for that matter. So they're trying to find fault with Jesus, and they're, they're putting up, putting him up against Moses, because they're the people of Moses. So if they can find him to contradict Moses, they got him. So they say, they, and you know, there's people like that. They know the Bible so well, but they never commit. They never you know, cross over the Jordan to work for the Lord. They, they spend their life just knowing the, I know people like that. They want to know all the little details about uh, what every number means, but they never want to do anything for the kingdom. And these are the lawyers. And so the Lord, they go back to Moses to, to tempt him, to try him. And he goes farther back. He says, have you not read? I mean, you guys obviously read. Have you not read? He which made him at the beginning made him male and female. So they go back to Moses. He goes back to God, to the creator. He says, he made him male and female. Um, and this, I read somewhere where man without a woman is, is, is not complete. And the Bible says that itself. But uh, I'll put here... Um, he goes back to Moses. God, they go back to Moses. God goes, goes back to God farther back. He says, I tell you what. And so I put 180 degrees because man by himself, if you can see, uh, you can see about 180 degrees like this. So that's half a circle. And if you put a man and a woman back to back, that completes the circle. So it's a picture of, of com completeness and wholeness. And this is what the Lord says. Um, he says this. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So that's, the way, that's what the Lord says. It's not good. And then he says this. I, I, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is above rubies? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. And that's why I put that no need of spoil to plunder. He's complete. He's got his hold. He, he's got everything he needs. If he's, ha if he's got a wife, he's got everything. So the Lord says, 
No, I'm telling you what, when the Lord made them, for this cause shall a man leave his father, father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. And he says, for this cause, for the fact, because anybody has got mother and father, he's, he's complete. He's got everything that he needs. So he says, when they leave that, everything that they have, they cleave to a wife, and that continues. You have everything again. And that's the way I see this. You have everything you need, and then once you leave mom and dad, you have a wife, you return back, you get, you're complete again. You have everything you need. No need to plunder. Um, and then he says, they twain shall be one flesh. And that is repeated twice. <coughs> so whenever, like I said, whenever I see something repeated twice, I says, okay, the Lord is saying something here. I want to uh, catch what, what that means. And sure enough, now look at the land of Israel. The land of Israel is divided. And folks, when you read the Bible, they're always at war. Israel, Israel and, and, and they're always fighting, the north and the south. They don't get along. And that's not the way the Lord wanted that land to be. That, the Lord wanted that land to be, he wants to use it for a, for a work. And you, if you go to Israel, that's what strikes you. If you go down there, if you go to Israel, it's a, it's a land that's nowhere. They're athe atheistic. And then there's the Samaritans or the, or the Samarians. And, but now they have the West Bank, which is mostly that area. Mostly the West Bank is that area. Um, it's all cut up. So one body, um, what God has joined together to yoke. And that means for a work. When you yoke two oxen, that's what it's for. So that they can do the job. <coughs> So, and that's the way I'm reading it. If you, if you have any comments or points, just, yes, ma'am. Did you point where the West Bank is on that map? Um, not really. I mean, I should have done that. If I was gonna talk about it, I'll, I'll do that sometime. I'll okay. push, because it's all uh, rig, really crazy in there. I mean, it's mostly that area. Which area? The, the Israel, up in Israel. I mean, the West Bank even comes into Jerusalem. You know, it's like like this, all, all kind of. All so way. that's what that's what the wait a minute. That's what the Muslims want. They want the West Bank, all that area. Yeah. Well, I mean, they have it right now. They're allowed. They're coexisting with Israel. Um, Gaza is down here. Gaza is a little strip down here. But the West Bank is there. It's, it's intermingled with Israel. With Israel. And, um, so where's that big gigantic wall that they put up? It's in, it's in Jerusalem. Oh. Okay. It, it, it divides and in parts of the West Bank as well. Oh, really? But you okay. can see it in Jerusalem big time. It's a big wall and it divides uh, the two sides because they both claim to have Jerusalem as the capital. But now Trump has gone and made Jerusalem instead of Tel Aviv. Trump has made Jerusalem the capital mm -hmm. of the Israel. So this is why nobody should get involved in that thing because you, can't, you cannot solve it. This is only God can solve this thing because they're, they're both together. It's like I've heard officers say when there's a, 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 a dispute, a, 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 domestic dispute those are the toughest ones to get involved with because the sooner you, the soon as you get involved they're gonna both turn against you so you know enter at your own risk um, but I'll, that's a good point miss Andrea I'll need to show you that sometime within that area show how, how the West Bank is in there okay so as for a job now remember what I've said that Israel stand and, and uh, I've seen this nowhere, folks. I just see it that way. So it's just, I'm showing you, giving you a little extra here. The body is Israel, the soul is Benjamin, and Judah is the spirit. And if you see it like that, you, a lot of things open up in the Bible. A lot of things open up. Because it's a real body, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you some more. 
So the, we need the body. Um, just like Judah needs Israel to work together, we need, if you're, if you're saved, you're going to heaven. But God wants the body because that's what you have to work. Without the body, I'm useless. I'm dead. I can't teach. I mean, I need the body to be together. So last night I had to go to bed early. I got to shine my shoes, iron my shirt, do all the physical things and be ready for this morning. Um, the body's got to be together this morning to do the work. And so Israel has got to be together. They, they've always been at war, the South, North and the South. And here you have two entities, the man and the woman, the female and the male. They got to be together for that purpose. And now these Pharisees are coming. Is it okay to divorce for any, for any reason? And they're saying it's for any reason at all. So you need the body for the, for the kingdom work. So in a man and a woman, when they marry, they're yoked for the work of the kingdom. And, and it, it, it'll work that way. It, they get more done. So it's a picture. This picture of a marriage of man and a woman, Paul tells us it's a picture of Christ and the church. So if you mess with that picture, you're messing with the church. I mean, it's a picture that God, God wants to keep it pure uh, so, it, it, so everybody can see how that should work. But when you start messing with that, that union, you're destroying God's work. So look at this. They too shall be one flesh. <coughs> this is a great mystery. That's what the Bible says. That's what Paul says. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. <coughs> Because both both are going to work together. So if you if you destroy that picture, if you have that marriage and you tear it asunder, you're messing with the picture that God put out there—a a, a, a picture to for the world to see. When that picture is working great, it, it, it God is doing. Uh, God can use that picture. God can use that uh, uh, marriage for that. And for we are co-laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. So this is God's doing. Um, and also this. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Jesus says that to the church. He'll never leave us. So when a man and a woman separate or divorce, they're messing with the scripture. That's what they're just because God says, I'll never do it. But you do it. You did it. Um, and by the way, this is not the unpardonable sin. People do it. I mean, it's happening. So now, why did he depart? It seems like he's leaving. God is leaving. I mean, he himself left the people. He says, OK, you don't want me. But actually, it's, it's, it wasn't his doing. They did it to them, themselves. He was rejected. And that's why he's outside the kingdom. But he's going outside to come die for it and buy it. See, it's kind of intricate. I don't know if I'm making sense, you know? So it's like, it would be like the husband says, okay, I'm gone, I'm, I'm out of here. But he doesn't because look at this, look at this. Um, they say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He says unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. They said, well, how, how come Moses allowed us to have divorce? He says, well, he did it. Moses, he says, he gave us a commandment to give it. He says, he commanded us. But they're mixing things. We've seen that before earlier on at, at, the, at the Sermon on the Mount. We saw that because they're, they're mixing it. He says, they commanded us. Moses commanded us. He says, because of the hardness of your hearts, he suffered you. So they're, he, they're mixing this together. He commanded and with suffered. God gave, the Lord says, he gave, he gave you permission. And that's probably for the sake of the woman. Because in Israel, men were allowed 
to divorce their women, but women were not allowed to divorce their men. So that was lopsided. So for that purpose, God says, for this, it was probably for the sake of the woman to get her out of, out of a bad situation where the man doesn't want her. So they say, Moses commanded us, and he says, no, he gave you permission. That's all. But it was for the sake of the woman to protect her, probably. And, and look, at, look at this. Because God, where God, for Moses, does command, he says, when a man has taken a wife and married her, and then come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her, then let her write her a bill of divorcement. So he says, okay, you can do that. But then this best permission, but when it comes, if she leaves and then comes, marries another man, then the other man divorces her, and then she comes, she, then the law came in and says, no, you cannot do that. You cannot go marry somebody else and then come marry the same guy again. Don't do that. And that's when Moses comes in. So they were mixing the two parts of this. But this part here, the uncleanness, this is, look at this, folks. There's two schools of thought. Shammai, a, a rabbi, the conservative group says the only way that uncleanness can only be interpreted as unfaithfulness or uh, adultery. And then there was the other side, Hillel, the liberal group, they said, no, it can be done for anything. If she makes bad coffee, if, if all of a sudden she, she doesn't look as pretty, or whatever, or you find a prettier girl, you know, you can, you can get rid of her. So there was two schools of thought in whichever one you wanted to go with, you know, you, you could pick the, you pick, pick the side, but that's the, that's the way it was. And so, but he says, but from the beginning it was not so. It was never designed this way because God's got a picture. And he says, if you mess with that, if you mess with that union, you're messing with a picture that I want to show. You shouldn't do that. So, for I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth for adultery, and whosoever marrieth her, which, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So he says, there you have it. But, said, but I'm telling you, this is my stance. So they tried to trap him, and they couldn't, because the Lord is master, he's genius. I mean, and so he says, no, but this is what I tell you. Don't do it. As the, except even for that, yes. So the husband was only the one. He was the only one allowed to divorce. The wife couldn't do it. There was no. If you go back, this is what's amazing. Because one time this woman says, "I don't believe the Bible." I says, "Why not?" I says, "Because the Bible is against women." I says, "No, no, 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 no." I says, "Have you read the New Testament?" I says, "Paul." I mean, that kind of mentality or thinking is all throughout the Old Testament. Women was looked, were looked at as, as, as furniture or property. But Paul corrects all that. Paul, cor but you're right. That was not allowed. So if the woman was getting physically abused by her husband, she couldn't leave him? No, there was no. Wow. Okay. See, and this is why, and this is why when you read Paul, you fall in love. I said, wow, because we're so messed up. I mean, of course, you would probably have uh, uh, relationships or marriages in the Old Testament where they just loved each other. I mean, and there's no way when a man marries a woman and he loves her, and he's not going to abuse her. But you had cases, I'm sure you had cases like Nabal. Nabal was... So I feel sorry for Abigail, you know, poor woman. She was the brains in the whole place. The whole ranch, Nabal was a fool. And the Lord struck him dead one night because he, he did it. He just he got drunk and God said, okay, that's it. We're wrapping it up. And he died. But there were, I'm sure there were just the two sides of that. Okay. But look at this. Here's, I'm, I'm, this is what's so amazing. Look at this. But I say unto you, God says, no, except it be for this case, uh, for fornication, you commit adultery. But look at this. Now look at this. <clears throat> In Ezekiel, you find this story. The son of, man, son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. 
And the names of them were Aloha, Ahola, the elder, and Aholiba, her sister. And they were mine. And they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholiba. He tells you, he's telling you, these were mine. These were my girls. Who were they? Samaria and Jerusalem. So um, it says, Ahola, Ahola means her tent. And Aholiba means my tent is in her. That's interesting. I says, what? Well, that's the body. And that's the soul. Because the tent is, my tent is in her tent. See, that's the tabernacle. See what I mean about the tabernacle, how much light it adds into the whole thing? I mean, when I played with it, so, because I made models for kids, and I thought, wow, this is amazing, <coughs> because it, there's so much truth there. And then the Lord says this, they're mine, because inside was the Spirit of God. Inside that tent that was within the tent, because when the, the Spirit of God comes inside us, he comes to indwell our soul, and our soul is inside this body. So both belong to the Lord. The Lord not only wants our soul, but he wants our body. And if he can't use your body, that means you haven't entered the kingdom because you're doing your own thing. And there's Christians that are living like that. They live, they're Christians, but they don't want, they don't want to serve God. They want to do their own thing. And you can do that. And uh, we're going to get, later on, we're going to get into some, some more of that. But look at this. Say, they say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's wife, another man's, shall he, shall he return unto her again? Because a man won't do that. Um, shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet, again, yet return again to me. The Lord says, come back to me. Isn't it amazing? He, put, he, he put, draws a picture of what a man is like. He says, but I'm not like that. I want you back. I want you back. The book of, of Jeremiah, it's all about that. Return to me. Turn. That's what it says, return. Oh, backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you. He never left them. He's never left them, even now. And that's why Paul says this. Paul says this. I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Israel is still his people, even though they don't, like, they don't care for him. Even though they're atheistic. You go to Israel and you find these people don't care for Jesus. God says they're still mine. There's a remnant. Even so, at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So that's a picture of how God is. He's so different from us. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, this is funny, it is not good to marry. Boy, if you can't divorce her for any reason, well, it's better not to get married then. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> this is a crazy thing, and they were saying, he said, well, you mean we can't, we can't divorce her for if she makes bad coffee? I said, no. Well, it's best not to get married. But he says, but he says unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. And this gave me great insight, folks, because look at this. Not all can receive that. Not all men can be single. Uh, but only them save only them to who it is given. So singleness, is, it's a gift. It's a gift, a an honor. You know, because the world, I, I've, done, I've been in places where I'm looked at, down like, well, he couldn't get a wife, right? You know, somehow you just couldn't do it. Yeah. And I want, and I want to get up and say, I could too. <laughs> but you know, God says that's an honor. It's a gift, and only He's bestowed it on people. He does that, and so, and then He says this: For there are some eunuchs 
which were born so from their mother, that's an abnormality from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And of course, Daniel fall, falls into that category. Um, and then, and then which, uh, there were eunuchs that were made and which made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of God. And those are the others. And that's what Paul says. It says, rather to just spend your time working for the Lord. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So he says this, for the kingdom, for, uh, the kingdom of heaven's sake, if you can do that. And then he says, if you, if you can receive it, uh, receive it. And Paul, again, that word means contain, control, restrain. And Paul says the same thing in 1 Corinthians 7, 9. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. So God, God's made provisions for that. Um, okay, so look at this. Then were there brought unto him little children. And it seems kind of disjointed. I says, huh, what does that mean? All of a sudden, he switches on from this. Uh, he questioned, the question that the Pharisees were asking him. And so now he says, then, then were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus says, Jesus says, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. Now in the book of Mark, he gets angry. He was very angry because they were keeping the children from coming to him. The disciples said, well, he, here's a single man, a 33-year-old 33 33 single man. That means he's... He's not interested in the things of this world, and so keep the children away from him, you know? Don't let him uh, take up his time. Mm -hmm. And folks, I like kids. I really like kids. But I gotta be careful now in the world we live in because if a, a grown-up sees you messing with little kids, they're gonna think, oh, well, this guy, he's a single, he's a man, watch him. You know, so I gotta watch myself because that's, I always thought when I came to, to Wesatch, I says, you know, I worked for kid, with kids for 30 years, I'm probably done. Because if I come into a church and I says, I work with kids, they're gonna say, uh, yeah, <laughs> right. We're gonna watch you, fella. So I says, I'm probably done, you know, because I won't work with kids again. So I come here and the, late, the teacher that worked with kids at this church had just died, Miss Jones. I says, I told Brother Bess, Brother Bess, I, I, I'm a teacher. I says, I says, oh yeah, I said, I teach kids. Oh, well, you could take Mrs. Jones' place. I says, yes, isn't that crazy? I thought I would, because normally I've read uh, uh, the Green Letters book, it says that it takes about 10 to 15 years to build a ministry. That's how long it takes. So people that are church hopping, they should, they should read that because if you're church hopping, you'll never get a chance to build a ministry because that's how long it takes, especially if you're gonna work with kids because it takes about that long for moms and dads to trust you with their kids, you know? And I'm amazed with Miss Stacy and Josh. They trusted me with little Reagan. I mean, I'm amazed at that. <laughs> right fast, they don't know me that long, but they trusted me really fast uh, with their little precious little treasure. And I think, wow, God, that's amazing. Because I think, you know, being single, I, I'm, that's a part of my world that doesn't exist. But it, it, it's, it's got two benefits. I don't do diapers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of neat. Uh, so it's kind of neat. But the thing is, they took him away from him. And, he, and in the book of Mark, he's angry that they did that. No, 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 no. He says, don't do that. Suffer the little ones to come and forbid them not. Uh, these are the little people. These are the ones that are simple, trusting, teachable, to be led, obedient, and they're full of wonder. I mean, if, you know, if you're around kids, that's what they are. You know, kids have got, given me rocks, flowers, and things as gifts. I mean, a little boy at the other church one time, as I got, I got off my truck and I was coming with my stuff to teach, he had a gift for me, and I put my hand out, and he dropped a bunch of little pebbles. And he just looked at me, I says, 
Oh, thank you. Wow. Rocks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that's, that's, that's them. Um, so you don't know whether... Now, here's, here's, now watch what happens. Watch what happens. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. I says, huh? Was this one of the children? Yeah, probably. But this one's grown up. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So here you have, I think, uh, there's so many ways. In, in Mark, when I taught this in the book of Mark, I says, here's a young man that comes, and he's teachable. Because he says, what do I, what do I need to do? So he's a child. He's a young man. He's under 40. Under 40, you're still considered, in the Bible, a youth. A youth, you know? So, oh, by the way, I turned 70 over the weekend. Uh, I mean, in the 21st. 370s. Yeah, yeah, me, right? You just turned 72, right? I said, yeah. Not too many people get to, you know, I mean, it's a milestone. Ta -da. You wake up, says, Lord, because the Bible says three score and ten is a full life. Anything over that is gravy. I'm in gravy time now. <laughs> oh, man. You know, uh, so here's what happens. Here's a young, teachable person. And in the book of Mark, I taught, he came running, he kneeled, he does all the things that little children do, you know, the young man. So he, evidently, this is one of the children. And I think when people divorce, you hinder this type of thing. Because you can see it in this young man, he's rich. Um, he's rich. He's got, and so that becomes his security. And I think that's what happens to a lot of young, little young people, too, when a mom and a dad divorce it causes an insecurity in their lives you know because they don't I mean it's an awful thing for, for a young child to, to lose uh, the parent um, so here you have good master what should, what good thing shall I do he wants to do something and so the Lord says this there's only one good and that is God and so of course he is God Jesus is God and he says keep if you're doing good okay keep the commandments and look what he says. He says, he says, um, which? Because he seems like he to have done everything. And so the Lord goes through all these. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And look what he says. He said, the young man says unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus says unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that which thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So he's going to death. He says, go and sell everything you have. Now he doesn't, of course he doesn't do that to everybody. I mean, he's not asking us, only if that thing you have is your God. If, that's, if you're making that your your trust, if you're making, and we're gonna see it, because he's about to go through Jericho, and Jericho is a fortress. If you're making that your <clears throat> fortress, it shouldn't be, because the Lord is my fortress. The Lord is, he's my security. But he says, go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and follow me. Now, why treasure in heaven? Because that implies his treasure was here on earth. That was his treasure, everything, he, all his riches. Now, Miss Andra, you called me one night and we were talking about that, that young man. And I believe, that's what I believe. I believe that this young man is this guy, is Mark. Because it says in 22, <clears throat> but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, <clears throat> excuse me, for he had great possessions. He says, yikes, that was... But I think that this young man later did what he was told. Because look at this. In Mark 10, 21, it says, Then Jesus behold him, beholding him, loved him. One thing thou lackest. So who can say that except somebody is, when, 
Mark is the only one that says that. And so that's why I believe that this is Mark. Because Mark says, when he's looked into his eyes, he says he, he loved them. He's talking in the third person. He says, he loved them. And you can only know that when he was looking at his eyes. He loved them. Thou lack is one thing. And look, look what happens here. In Mark 10, 51, and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young man laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. He did it. He sold everything. And I think that's him. He's, he's Mark showing us. In a subtle way, he's showing us that I did it, guys. I did got, get rid of everything, and all I was left with was the linen. And even that was taken away from me at the Gethsemane. That's what I <clears throat> believe that is. Okay, let us, um, and now this is what it's going to close like. And then Jesus, then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man, that a rich man sh shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is entering into the work. And again, <clears throat> excuse me, and again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So he says, not only is it hard for people to enter into the work of God, money, because of money, it is difficult also to get saved because of money, because of, uh, because of the deceitfulness. Um, we're told that um, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, it, it's, it's difficult to enter into his work because you're making money. And I know people like that. They're so busy making money, they have no time for God right now. And, and they're saved. And then there's people that will never enter the kingdom of God because their trust is riches of this world. And so we're told again in Mark, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and says unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So we're going to close it here. Um, then Paul then answered Peter and said unto them, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And he says this, and Jesus says unto them, Verily I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration of the Son of God shall sit on the throne of his glory. You also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And that's, of course, to the disciples. But now he's about to cross the Jordan. Okay, so we'll start there next week. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness. Um, Lord, thank you for your word that is so rich. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, and help us to see these things, Lord, that we would be about your business. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.